Hey guys, Gruz here. Hope you guys are doing well today. Well in this video, I want to install a couple of upgrades in my Mac SE here. So over the years I've noticed that my Mac has gotten a little bit louder than it used to be. Or at least I think so anyways. I'm so used to computers being just completely silent these days that when I turn this computer on and I hear that sound of it just running, It's actually kind of stressful if that makes any sense. Like when I turn it off, I feel like a relief. Like it's like <sighs> But I don't like the sound, so in this video, I'm gonna try and do something about it. First, I've got here the Noctua NF-A6X25FLX premium fan. This seems to be the one that everyone recommends for these compact Macs that if you want a quieter fan, then you use this fan. It comes in a very nice package and it looks really premium. The second upgrade I want to do to this computer is to get the old hard drive out of there because that thing is loud as heck. Obviously I need a hard drive, so to replace it I've got here a blue SCSI. This is a neat gadget to where you can just plug it in where your old hard drive was and then run a micro SD card as a hard drive. So yeah, I've never replaced a fan in one of these computers before. It's probably going to be a learning experience for both of us, but it sounds fun, so let's do it. So before I crack open the case, I know for sure that I want to back up all the cool stuff off my hard drive. Once the old mechanical drive comes out of the computer, I really won't have many options to recover that data later. So what I'm going to do here is use this external blue SCSI to back up my entire hard drive. This thing is awesome. It's like having a flash drive for your vintage Mac. I ordered my internal blue SCSI from Tom Barber, and he also threw in one of these external ones. Shout out to Tom, I didn't know how cool these were. If you want to move large amounts of data on and off of vintage Macs, there's really nothing that beats one of these. I'll put a link to Tom's shop in the description if you want to pick one of these up. So first I tried just dragging and dropping all of my files onto my SD card. But for some strange reason, it didn't want to copy everything over. I ended up narrowing this down to the System Picker app folder on the hard drive. I'm tri-booting System 4, System 6, and System 7 on this machine, so I'm guessing that's why it's being thrown off. I tried booting System 6 from a disk image to see if maybe there was an issue where the system was using one of the files. But nah, it still didn't work. I ended up just copying every other folder to my SD card besides the System Picker folder. Then after I had copied everything else, I made a new folder for it. Then just copied the app over to my new folder. I don't know what that was all about. I'm going to use this SD card in my internal blue SCSI and have an exact copy of my old hard drive plus as much space as I'll ever need. Alright, now that that's sorted, it's time to dig into the machine. To open up one of these Macs, you'll need a really long Torx T15 driver. These are readily available online and pretty cheap these days, but I have been using a homemade one for the past 15 years or so. Back in the day, I heated up a Bic pen with a lighter and jammed a T15 bit in one end and a connector in the other. And this thing has served me well ever since. Greatest tool ever. So the case has four screws total which hold it together. Two on the top under the handle and two on the bottom by the ports. I want to make sure I keep track of where I took these screws from. The silver ones are up top by the handle and the blackish ones are on the bottom. To separate the two halves of the case, you can slap the sides a bit and sort of shake it, kind of using gravity to loosen it. There are case cracking tools that you can get to make this a lot easier, but the slapping and shaking method has always worked for me. Just don't use a screwdriver or butter knife or anything like that because that will leave marks on the case. So here we are inside of the Mac. The CRT is exposed and could potentially be harmful at this point, so I need to be careful where I'm touching until I can discharge the CRT. On the very bottom of the computer, there's an insulator sheet dealio thing here. I took this off and set it aside because it'll get all bent up when I'm moving the computer around and I want to keep it nice. Now before I go any further, I need to play it safe and discharge any stored up electricity from the CRT. I built this little wire which connect two alligator clips together. So I can clip on one of these guys to a flathead screwdriver and clip the other side somewhere to ground the computer. I clipped it to this top left screw where there was already something being grounded. Then I slid the end of the screwdriver under the cap, touching the metal clamp inside. I didn't see any sparks or anything, but I'm pretty sure it's okay now. Now that I've discharged the CRT, I can remove the anode cap from the picture tube. 
which is a little bit difficult to do. There's a clip in there which I pushed to one side and then lifted the other side out a bit and kind of rocked it out that way. It's kind of hard to do this when you're trying to film it. So now that I know it's safe to work on, I'm going to try and install the new fan first. And to do that, we're going to need to remove the analog board. To do this, I need to remove eight screws, which you can see here. I need to keep track of where I take these screws out from. There are two different types of screws here holding this in. Now to free the board, I need to tilt it a little bit so that I can remove all the connectors. There are five different connectors and not much room to work with. And I need to be careful not to damage the back of the CRT. It's very fragile. After I got most of the connectors out, I can almost remove the board, but I need to be careful to guide the display brightness knob out from its little cubby. It would be a disaster if I broke that off. So after I got the knob out, I was able to unplug the last connector from the board and finally free it from the system. I needed to get a better look at the back of the board to see where the fan's wires were soldered. But in order to get access to the back of the board, I needed to remove several of these plastic clips holding the insulation slash instruction sheet to the board. I found that I could squeeze the clips and lift them up and off the board. Then I could get a better look at the situation and figure out how I'm going to handle it. So, if you follow the wire here, it runs along here, it's hot glued into place, and then it goes through here, which through here seems to be right there. So unfortunately to get this fan out, we have to take off this screw and then this screw, but this screw is behind this uh, power majigger, so the only way, real way to get to that is to uh, take it off the board. Here there's one two and then three and then four right there so we'll take those off next so after the fan case was freed from the board i needed to remove the hot glue holding the wires to the board this was surprisingly difficult and i was very surprised to see that this glue has held up so well after all these years it's that apple glue it took me about five minutes of careful prying but i was finally able to free the fans wires from the board without damaging any of the other components I hope. Before I commit to removing the old fan from the board, I'm going to install the new fan in the mount just to make sure that everything fits all right. And yeah, it is very much identical to the old fan in terms of size. Everything fits as it should, and I was able to use the old screws to secure the new fan into place. It was at this point that I decided that I was just going to hardwire the new fan into place on the board. I used a safety pin to pop out the wires from the connector. And since my soldering iron is so used and abused, instead of trying to get my new wires through the board, I'm just going to trim these wires and install my fan with the wires already in place here. I first stripped the ends of the wires, and looking back at this footage, I must say, guys, don't do it like I am here. I didn't realize how dangerous this looks. Like I'm going to slice my finger. Don't worry, I'm a professional. Stripper. So next I tin the leads. and slip on some heat shrink tubing before I connect the wires for good. When I was off camera, I put some solder on the ends of the metal clips and it stuck so well that I decided just to leave them on. So I joined together the wires and with as much coffee as I drank today, it went all right. Not my best work, but not the worst either. The connection is solid, so I slid up the tubing and locked it into place. And that was that. The worst of it was over. All that's left now is to mount the fan back into place. I held the fan in place and put back all four of the screws. And that was it. The fan is now installed. So next I need to get the insulator sheet lined up and reinstall these plastic clips back on the board to get it locked back into place making sure the clips are all pulled up a little bit before I try to insert them into the board. I push them back into place to lock it back on there. Now that we're completely done with this analog board, it's time to get it back into the computer. So first I'm going to position the board to be really close to the computer, but to where I'm still able to tilt the board to get my big gruz hands in there. I'm trying to connect all the power connectors back to the analog board and then position the brightness knob back into place. It was tough to get that knob back into the little cubby while making sure the board is lined up with the guides, including the screw holes on the power supply. It took me a couple minutes to line everything up the way it's supposed to be. 
After I got everything back into the position, it was time to get the screws back in there and get it locked back into place. Like I mentioned before, I tried my best to keep track of where I took these screws out from because there are a couple of different ones used here. Now that the board was completely locked back in, I made sure the brightness knob was as it should be and it would still turn like it should. So next up I tackled the hard drive situation. I believe I upgraded the drive at one point. It's like 200 megabytes or something like that. But it's very loud and it's time to retire it from this machine. It's really easy to do. There are only two screws holding in the sled, so it's just a matter of getting your screwdriver in there and pulling those out. There are two cables plugged into the back of the hard drive, the SCSI connector and the power cable. Both of these need to come out, but it is located very close to the fragile end of the CRT. So I've got to be very careful not to break anything. Once the cable came out, it was just a matter of pulling it out of there. Next, I'm going to pop out the SD card from the external blue SCSI and move it over to my internal one. Then it's time to remove the four screws holding the hard drive into the sled. Then I can just lift the hard drive right out of there. This was a Quantum Pro Drive ELS. It has served me well. Next, I'm going to mount the blue SCSI into the hard drive sled. But the mount for the blue SCSI only uses two out of the four screws. So I'm just going to screw them back into the sled. I'll know where they are if I ever need to put a traditional hard drive back into this computer. But now I just screw the blue SCSI into position, pop the sled back into the Mac, and lock it down with the screws. And it was at this point that I kind of felt a little silly. See, the blue SCSI is efficient, and it's actually powered by the SCSI cable. It doesn't require the extra power cord that the original hard drive does. This means that I have an extra 4-pin Molex cable. I could have just plugged my fan into it and completely avoided all the soldering. This fan comes with the cable, and I would have probably went that route had I thought about it more. Ah well, you live and learn. So I plugged the SCSI cable into the blue SCSI, reconnected the cable into the CRT, and finally, it was all done. So before I go through the trouble of putting the case back on, I'm going to test everything out to make sure I didn't goof anything up along the way. Fire in the hole. Okay, here we go. Oh, the fan's blowing. CRT is powering on. It's very dark. Here we go. Oh, it looks good. Oh no. Oh shoot. Why is it playing Mac Wars? Well, I don't know why it's playing Mac Wars. I must have had that like on the hard drive or something and for some reason it thinks that that's the main disc or something, but that kind of scared me at first because I didn't know why it was beeping like that. Wow. Okay, so this is pretty dangerous. Don't ever do this. It's plugged in and everything's on and it can shock and kill you right there right now. So don't ever do this, but I just want to show you the fan running while it's tore down like this. Yeah. That is so quiet and it's got a lot of airflow too. I think there's actually more airflow than there was before. So yeah, everything works. Mac Wars almost gave me a heart attack, but we can fix that. The most important part is that everything is mechanically working the way it should. Sweet. So I reinstalled the back of the case, put the screws back in, and fired it up using a System 6 disk image to repair the hard drive. And that's that. I would say this mod was a complete success. The computer is now much quieter than it was originally, and the hard drive is working like a champ. My trusty Mac SE is now better than ever. I absolutely love the blue SCSI, and my ears are loving the new fan. It was a little weird at first with how quiet it is, but I'm already getting used to it, and it was exactly what I was looking for. It was a little more difficult to install this fan than it is to install one in a modern PC, but I had a lot of fun doing it and making this video for you guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it to let me know. It really helps out the channel. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this channel. I make all sorts of cool videos just like this one, so subscribe for more. Thanks for your time, guys. I'll see you soon with a new video. Goodbye.